The next was uh, a panel. Several speakers were talking about this world without the carceral state. And many of you know that the carceral state is just like the one about the school to prison pipeline. It's about prison. Um, and I want to give you some action items right at the start, and then I'm going to give you uh, like the details. So the first action item was use restorative justice with kids. Don't isolate them. Instead, ask questions like, who was involved? What really happened? What needs to happen in order to make things right? Involve them in the restoration. The second was show role models of the best practices of or accomplishments that you want them to achieve. And ideally, they're people who are like you, as close to you as possible. And then the third is give our kids, our own children, more agency and expect more accountability from them. So the panelists included Cozine, who I think I'll give you a little bit more of his story later. Victoria Burton Harris, Yusuf Banshi Shakur, uh, and it was hosted by Danielle C. Dunn, and, and it was really incredible. And so let me let me explain this. So it started off talking about the Thirteenth Amendment. So the Thirteenth Amendment um, is the one about forced slavery. So forced slavery and servitude is illegal, except as punishment for a crime. And that's really important. So there's still slavery and there is still servitude if you are found guilty of a crime today, 2021. And this is happening a lot in our society. And they ask the question, what mindset does your child get when you enter a school greeted by an armed school resource officer, like who's packing weapons, metal detectors, and you see punitive measures in your classroom, such as no tolerance suspensions. Some schools, like I'm talking like preschool children, have to go through metal detectors. They're saying that responding punitively is not restorative. It does not allow them to reflect on why they caused the harm. And more importantly, it doesn't allow us to reflect as a society on how we, as a society, have failed this individual who has been segregated from the rest of our society. For example, we don't ask education, mental health, poverty questions when we punish. When people act out, they don't develop this appreciation for what happened. Like restorative measures can also be for those who do the harming. It's not only for the people who harmed. There, and uh, this message from Cozine was really good. Like, there are no bad people. Everyone has value. Everyone can be redeemed. They need to know that they have value. They need to know how they can be redeemed. And this is the, the gap. This is the thing that's missing. And so a system of true justice needs to be restorative. And we think like, oh, this just applies to prison. It just applies. No, this applies to parenting. As parents, when something happens, we feel we have to punish. We must. But the message from this panel was we need to connect before you correct. Connect before you correct. You know, fear, it holds back restoration. We, we don't welcome others with open arms when we feel like afraid and uncomfortable. As a parent, we, we worry. We tell our kids, you better be scared or you better be afraid of this because that's how we were raised. And so we pass the baton, as Antoinette was saying, we pass on the fear. Now, a little bit about uh, Cozine. So Cozine, who was one of the panelists, um, he went to prison at 17 years of age for 20 years. Um, and one of his messages was, he says, it's hard to believe that you can achieve great things if you never see any role models that look like you. And, and I, I've heard this before. It's like, it's hard. People don't, if they only see certain types of 
like races represented in like in the examples, like the great examples of history that you learn in social studies, then you're never going to think that, yeah, this is something that's achievable by me. Um, and, and Cozine went on to say, when you go to prison, it's like you're going to your room for 30 days and you're making your bed and only talking to certain people. You feel like you're being treated like a child. Why? Why do you feel like you're being treated like a child? Because your upbringing gave you that. We say we as parents are preparing our kids for school. But are we really preparing our kids for prison? It's a it's a bold statement that he said, but it made me think like, wow, yeah, like this this punitive discipline, we use it all the time at home in the families with our, ch our kids. And, and it's the same kind of mechanism that's used in our society. So what can we do that's different? How can we move in a different path, a more restorative path? Find opportunities to involve our children in restoration. Instead of punishing, ask, well, what were you thinking at the time? Who was involved? What really happened? What do you think what did you think after you realized what happened? What effects did this have on you and others? What needs to happen in order to make things right? Give them power, give them control, give them agency. Set them up to be forever in control of their own lives, because ultimately, we will have to give up that control eventually. The interesting thing was, he says, children don't need us to make decisions for them. And you'll see this as a recurring theme. Uh, justice as a society, it means that it cares enough about you to give you freedom and a high level of accountability. And as parents, we want that same level. We want to give them a high level of freedom, but also a high level of accountability. And justice as revenge or punishment doesn't lead to this restoration. So we can't expect restoration when we lose agency, when we feel alienated and we aren't empowered to care for ourselves. And this is an important theme. Like when we, they don't feel empowered, they don't feel responsible. So you'll, you'll hear about more about this theme about you don't empower them. You, you take all the decisions away and you do things for them. If things go, go wrong, like they, they don't do well in school, it's not their problem. Right? Like they don't feel responsible at all. Uh, but also stop going to separation when they do something wrong. We put people in a cage and we expect that they all will be well. But it doesn't, of course. We can co create the solution and instead of separating, uh, go towards those restorative questions. Young people today are angry, but they don't know why. And our answer shouldn't be to separate them. Rather, like the mission is to get to that why. Um, our solution may be to pluck them out of the classroom. Uh, but as adults, we, we also need to believe that these restorative practices work. Um, we need to believe that their people are more than, say, a grade or a household income. We can't expect children to rise above if we put them in these environments that are harmful uh, to them.